Welcome to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT. I am your host, Orst, and in this channel we cover tutorials, reviews, and automation of IT tools. In this tutorial today, we are going to cover Postman, and in particular, one section of Postman called Collections and Requests. And so, to get started, you only really need a, a Mac or a PC, and I believe it also works with Linux as well. Um, now, what is Postman? Well, Postman is the only complete API development environment, as noted here. What it really is, though, is at the base of it, it's a very, very powerful HTTP client. It's just like a web browser, but it can do so much more. It integrates collaborations, tools, testing tool, monitoring tools, all these tools that allow you to stand up your web APIs and really test their functionality and make sure they're production ready. Um, as you can see here, this is the, the main page of the Postman's website in order um, to give you just a high level of what Postman does. They have workspaces just like any other development environment, um, collaboration tools as noted, and so in here I'm just really going through the page so we can get an idea of really quickly what Postman looks like at a high level. And so to get started, I have another page open. Um, this is docs.postmanecho.com, or excuse me, postman-echo.com. And here we can pull through a collection just to get started. So what I'm gonna do is click this run in Postman, and it's going to allow me to open the page up. And so this is assuming you've already had Postman downloaded, it'll actually come up for you. And so right now it's opening up on my other screen, so I'm gonna change my display real quick so that you can start seeing how it looks. Here you can see is when you first open up Postman, you have a basic set of menu items, uh, creating a new request, collection, environment, um, or other advanced topics such as API documentation, mock servers, or monitoring. And so in this case, um, we're not going to create anything. We're going to have all of this set for us in that download we just got. And so as you can see, sometimes it doesn't always work the right way when doing so. So if I click it one more time in, in the UI from Chrome, we should be pulling in this collection. And now as you can see, we have Postman Echo. And so in this case, I'm just gonna go over the simple get request in here. And so just to get started, at this top level here, where you see Postman Echo, that is the collection itself. And then under the collections, you have folders. And within the folders, you can have requests. Um, you don't need requests, excuse me, folders to have requests, but it's another way of organization. You could think of it that way. And so here, we're gonna go through, again, the get request. And so starting off on this tab menu here, you can see we have multiple HTTP options. These are probably the most common ones um, in general with a REST a interface. Um, and Postman API really, excuse me, Postman really works well with uh, REST APIs and development of those, but you are not forced to do REST within here. So as you can see, these are most of your options, but you can also set them in here as well to whatever you like. So if you have a custom HTTP option, which that would never be one, but if you did, you can go ahead and put that as need be. So in here, that's where we have our HTTP uh, method. In this section here is where we have our URL. So in this case, it's or host name, you know, depending on what you're looking at. So here it's postmanecho.com, get foo bar, and what this actually will do is just echo this back out to us in the form of a response. Here we have our send button, which we just send off the request, and additionally you can send and download uh, where it sends it and downloads the response into a, a file. Um, here is just saving the actual request, um, same thing as doing Command S or Control S on Windows. And here you could do a save as just to change the name. So under it we can configure the actual settings 
of the request. So here is our params uh, menu option, and params is just query parameters. So you can see like foo bar that we have up top here. We have the authorization here, which can be set to basic, bearer, or many other types of author authentication, like an API key. And all this really does is it'll actually set an authorization header for us in the headers section. Here in the headers, we can set anything like a general content type header or a content length header. Here in the body, we can set our form data or URL encoded data, raw or binary, and a new options graph QL. Um, but in here's the general options where we set the request body. Since it's a get, we don't need one. Uh, and our pre-request script, you can think of it as a Node.js interpreter. And what this does is it allows you to run custom Node.js code to manipulate the request or perform a request prior to this one, such as getting a token. So this allows a bit of automation when running through your um, requests, especially when doing testing. And so in this case, um, we have a, on the side window, we have get environment variable, get global variable. These are snippets of code that we can put in here to get us started. And at the end, we have something here called tests. Same thing, it's a Node.js interpreter uh, written in Postman's flavor of Node.js. And here we can test the response or we can check against the response, such as, such as does the response have a 200 status code or does the response have certain uh, JSON parameters? Um, as you can see here in this code. So in order to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and just click send. And so as we wait for that to come back, we'll notice that we have a response. And so in here in the response body, this is basically what we get back from the Postman echo. And so as I've noticed or mentioned, the args and foo and bar are basically exactly what we put up here in the request. So it's just an echo of what we sent through. Here it actually sends us back the headers, what we sent through um, in a JSON formatted way. And then here's our actual URL that we, we perform the get on. Here we have the cookie section, which just works as any other cookies you would think of in, um, in the, like a browser. Next, we have the headers section, which sets all the headers or tells us all the headers that were in the response. So the content encoding, the content type, all these different things that we normally get in the headers. It's uh, nicely viewable in this table format. And then we have our last option here that says the test results, which just tells us the results of the Node.js code that executed for the checks. So such as did we get an OK response, such as a 200? You know, does it have those uh, echo values in the response, such as foo and bar and foo2 and bar2? Then at the right hand side here, we have a status that tells us, you know, what the HTTP status code was and its actual interpreted meaning, such as 200 means OK. Um, here we have our time in milliseconds, and if you hover over it, it gives us a breakdown of that time. Um, which is really nice to see. So if you ever need to look at performance issues or where things take a long time, you can see that right here. But then we have the size of the actual response, which in this case you see 717 bytes and the actual breakdown of how much data is in each part, like the header and the body. And then lastly here we have a save response option where if I wanted to save this for future use, you could save it as an example which will allow you to use it as a reference against development, or we can save it to file. And then that basically covers requests at a high level. Now we're gonna look at the collection level view. Um, and here I just click the ellipses in Postman Echo, and I'm going to click edit. In here, we see the high level of what is contained within the collection. So the meta level settings, as I might say. So here's just a description of what this collection is about. And as you can see and read it there, it's an echo service to test your REST clients and make sample API calls. And here we can set our authorization for all of our requests. So what this does is it allows me to set the authorization type and uh, authorization header and type so that I don't have to do it on each request level. In here you have the same 
uh, Node.js interpreter of pre-request scripts. So this is really useful when you need to capture a token, as mentioned before. So if all these services need a token in order to perform, you can do that right here and without having to do it at the individual request level. Same thing here with tests. So if you know there's a certain criteria that each of these uh, requests uh, must follow in the response, we can do that here. Or if you need to do other things within the actual uh, ADE or IDE, um, which is Integrated Development Environment, um, we can do that here. And lastly, we have our variable section. And this allows us to set dynamically uh, or static variables that are consumed within the uh, request. And so there's a certain syntax that goes with using variables, but in, we will cover that in the next section. However, this is just a, a, a nice spot for you to put these variables in for use. And lastly, we have a few settings within here or columns. The variable name goes here. So I can write test as a variable name. Then the initial value is actually what the value is set to, um, like the hard-coded, more static type value. So I can set, let's say, OK as the initial value. And you'll notice that the current value gets populated automatically once I cursor out. However, the current value is actually what is used within the test itself. So if I want to change it to not, we'll notice that when in the test execution, not will actually be used instead of in the, uh, the initial value, OK. However, if you need to reset it to OK, you can do reset all, which will in reset this section here to OK, or that being current value will become OK again. And then if we want to do the reverse, where we want to change the initial value, we can click this persist all, which will take the current value and set it to the initial value. So this case, initial value will become not. So all in all, this is the high-level overview of Postman's requests and collections features. Uh, there is so much more to Postman, and I really look forward to going over those with you in the next video. Thank you for being here with me on my inaugural video of Dev Odyssey. If you like this video, please subscribe and click a thumbs up. Um, and if you want more videos like this uh, coming your way, click the bell to get those notifications. In the next video, we're going to cover more in depth about Postman. And so in this case, we'll go over different request methods and we'll go over the environment uh, concepts as you see at the top right hand corner. Thanks again, guys, and see you in the next video.